Hey there friends, glad to be back today. And in the previous video, I talked about dividing and conquering and how this exists in our relationships and our marriages and how, you know, when we stop talking to our friends and family to try to keep the peace with our spouse or significant other, we begin to basically devalue ourselves and put ourselves on like this desert island with just them and us, right? And so in the last video, I suggested that if you've been cutting off or have cut off family members, friends, that it's time now to start reaching out to them during the work week when you are not around your significant other. Um, explaining to them the situation and with some of the people that uh, you really need to have that heart to heart talk, you're gonna need to spend time with them. So you're gonna need to set up meetings, um, wh whether it's your mom that you cut out or your dad that you cut out, um, whether it's kids from a previous marriage, uh, whether it's your best friends, you're going to probably have to sit down with them and you're going to need to tell them the truth about how it got here. Okay, because like I was saying before, I'm not judging you. Okay, because I understand that you started this concept because you thought if I just give her or him what he wants right now, they'll calm down, it'll be good, everything's going to be fine. But you didn't realize that you're going to have to keep giving until the well was dry. Okay, so now at this point when you're watching this video, you have reached out to family members and friends. You have begun to mend these relationships. Um, and one of the things that, you know, depending on the level of that connection, you know, where there's, it's, a, it's a family member or a really, really close friend, I want you to really meet with them and be truthfully honest. Okay, you got to be direct, honest with them. And so once you've done that and they understand how it got there, I don't want you to sugarcoat why it happened. I don't want you to try to defend yourself why it happened. I want you to just explain it. And then what I want you to do at this point is I want you to begin to find other things to do as well. Um, what I find with a lot of clients is that when you get into the situation, right, you're like this property that's now devalued because you've let go of everybody in your life and you really don't have other things going on and you're coming straight home and you're dealing with them and, and they're, they're devaluing you too, that you've cut out like your outside stuff, like you're no longer working out, you're no longer taking care of yourself, you're no longer, you know, doing that hobby that you like to do, you're no longer playing those sports you like to play, you're no longer playing the instrument, um, the guitar, the drums that you like to play. So now it's time to begin to add back in doing things that you actually like to do. Um, I recently had a client that started painting. Uh, oil painting and they were really good at it for a long time and they stopped because their significant other uh, didn't like the fact that they were really good at oil painting um, and so they found they were critical of them and they wouldn't let them hang up their work and so they were having to actually hang up their work in a small um, annexed bathroom um, which is what it is but deterred my client from creating this type of stuff and so um, at this point in time it's like about thinking what do I want to create what do I want to do C connecting back with the things that were so um, important in your life you know whether it's photography um, a lot of you like photography or writing, maybe it's poetry, um, maybe it's gardening, whatever that is that you like to do, I want you to begin to do it. Um, the good thing about this is that different from the communications with the family members and the friends that your significant other is not privy to, this is something that I want you to not hide. I want you to make it very clear, not rude or anything like that, but this is what you're doing. So if you used to play the guitar all the time at the house before your spouse didn't like you doing it, I want you to begin to play the guitar. And I know that there might come arguments from this, okay? But you have to walk through this to resurrect your life, okay? We can't just try to avoid conflict our whole life because you know what? When we avoid conflict our whole life, we're not being who we are. We're not being honest. We're not being authentic okay because I'm gonna stand up for who I am okay because I know who I am and so if somebody tries to take away from me or tries to walk all over me there's gonna be conflict okay because you're stepping over my boundaries so for the first time there might be conflict again and I'm sure there's been conflict and you haven't even gotten to hang out with anybody or do anything so Think about it. Would you like to do what you like to do and have conflict? You already got conflict. So why don't we just go on forward and start finding ourselves again what we used to do? You know, another thing that I want you to realize too is that when we're in these situations, we begin to see our spouse or girlfriend or boyfriend as like this giant, right? Because they have this uh, 
really powerful um, personality um, and, and can be very overwhelming and stressful to deal with. And so we see them as this giant, right? We get scared of them. And so I want you to begin to see them as they are. You know, an interesting concept is I've, uh, I've worked with a lot of clients who've had um, spouses uh, who were either, you know, suffering with borderline personality disorder or, or extreme narcissism, and, and the list goes on. And the way that they walked on eggshells around this spouse of theirs, I, I really had to see pictures. Like, I really had to see, because I began to see them in session as like these huge, giant beings, okay? And so it was funny because I started asking my clients, if you don't mind, could you please show me a picture of your spouse? And, and, and it was really interesting because... Um, they were not giants. Most of them weren't tall at all. Some of them were actually quite small. Um, and what I mean by is that they, they were drawing up this big picture of, of, of this person. But do you see what I'm saying? It's not about height and weight. It's about the way that we create their image in our mind and how we get fearful of them in our mind. So I want you to begin to see your spouse or your, your significant other as who they are. Okay, and I want you to begin to look at them through the lens of reality. Okay, because a lot of times we're so fearful and we've been walking on eggshells for so long, right? We've been walking on eggshells for so long that it's time for us to get honest and begin to see them as who they are. One of the things that I've realized too is that when we begin to gain traction, okay, when we begin to get our life back piece by piece, it's almost like they're aware of it, okay? And it can go two ply. One, you can be more interesting to them. All of a sudden, they begin to see you in a different way because, see, before they had taken everything, you would actually agree to let go of everything in your life. So they didn't really take everything away from you. You actually conceded to do it. And so there wasn't anything to value anymore. You see what I'm saying? There was nobody talking about how great you are. There were no friends to hang out with. There was no, you know, you, you, it, was just, it was just you, a shell of you right? And so then they kept just devaluing the shell of you, okay? Until you began to even devalue yourself even more, feeling horrible about yourself and worrying about what you were going to do next and, and just not wanting to have an argument or a fight. So now it's time to begin to find you. What is it that you love to do? What are the things that you want to do? Another thing that I want you to become aware of is you rushing home, okay? You remember back when you started dating this person and you had like a life and a job and a career and you had other things outside of them and how you lived that life? That's what I want you to slowly get back, okay? Because I want you to find a life outside of this person, okay? Because remember, our value is not in someone else. You know, we're, we're looking outside of ourselves for value and it's really, it's always been in, in, inside of us. And so when we look outside of ourselves for value or we get, we fall in love with someone, we're like, I can't believe somebody this hot or this attractive or this smart or this rich loves me. Okay. And that's what happens is we begin to be dependent on the relationship with them and we categorize it as acceptance and this person loves me, so I'm great. But what happens when that person begins to devalue you, right? Okay, so the thing is, is that when we're looking for a key to something and the key's inside, we're just looking for something outside of us that has, it, we're never going to find it. Okay, so that's what we're doing here is we're finding you and it takes time to rebuild you because if we really go back to the beginning of this relationship, you didn't really know who you were because you wouldn't have been in this relationship. Because when you do know who you are and you do find, un so when you know who you are, because a lot of people, it's hard to explain that, right? What does that mean? Okay, so when I took that year off from dating and sex a long time ago, and I was able to write my first book, Live Your True Life, a couple years after that, three or four years after that, when I first took off that year, what I learned about myself was who I am, what makes me valuable and it took a long time to understand this because I was very codependent in my relationships. I was raised in a codependent family dynamic Okay, it came second nature to me. I was prone to get into relationships with people that, um, that were either BPD or narcissistic because I was codependent. Because remember, um, more often than not, a BPD is going to get with a BPD, a BPD is going to get with a narcissist, or a BPD is going to get with a codependent. A narcissist is going to get with a codependent. And you see how this goes? Because there's got to be somebody feeding into it, okay? 
there's got to be somebody feeding into it. And I, I was consistently finding the BPD is very uh, original and uh, and and just they, it just it was there was so much drama and so much energy and so much intensity. It was like a moth to a flame for me. Okay, and I was constantly finding that. And if I look back at it, it I mean, yes, it was it was folks, it, it was men that were obviously looked very different from one another, but they fell into that same type of category. And so when I took that year off, one of the things that I realized is why I chose that, why it was normal for me. Okay, uh, and I look back at the trajectory of my family. And you might realize that now. I mean, is mom or dad is or, or one of them suffering with BPD? Or one of them suffering with narcissism? Um, perhaps you were raised in a very codependent uh, family dynamic, and maybe you were codependent with a family member. Maybe your mom or dad had BPD and you didn't even know that, because most of us didn't know that, and we just wanted their love so bad we were walking on eggshells all the time trying to prove how much we love them, right? And so we'll do anything, but the problem was we didn't understand how they were going to respond. So one day you're doing something amazing and you're like, they're going to love me for it. And, and you don't get that response at all. You actually get the opposite response. And then one day you're doing something horrible and you get this great response. And so you don't really know what's going to happen or which way the pendulum's going to go. And so you literally gob onto them emotionally. And so that's what happened to me is that I, I began to find that in my relationships. And until I took that year hiatus off, because I realized that there was something wrong with them. Okay. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with them. But there was something wrong with me too. Because otherwise I wouldn't have found that attractive. Otherwise, if I knew who I was in the very beginning, before the third week, I would have said, hey, I love you, I care about you, but I'm out, I'm out. I gotta, I gotta find something different. Maybe before the first week. And so what I mean when I found myself is I begin to realize my value. And I realized my value away from other people. That's why I said I didn't date anybody and I didn't have sex for a year on purpose. Okay, because I wanted to find myself not with other people, not about, oh, they love me or they care about me or whatever. No, it was about me. And so I developed my boundaries. I, I figured out that I actually had like rules and regulations that I was going to stick with. But see, when I was with them, I didn't have any because I was always trying to get them to love me. Okay, now the thing that was frustrating that I didn't understand in the very beginning was that I wanted them to love me so bad, but I didn't know how to love myself. And so when I go back to saying I found myself, I was able to find my internal value for myself. And if you read the 10 day challenge to live your true life, and I hope you do, because it's very powerful. Um, it, it's a life changer. It's a game changer. I, I walk you through all the steps of finding it. Okay, of finding that unconditional love. And I, and I figured out what my values were, my beliefs and what I stood for and, and what I would deal with and what I wouldn't deal with and all that stuff. And so what I was able to do is I was able to find unconditional love. I was able to let go of that negative broken record, let go of that self-sabotaging behavior and see that I deserve to love myself too. And when I figured that out and I went back into the world of dating, there were many people that I was like, nope, 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 nope. Hey, you're great. I got to go. I'm like, not, I'm not walking out the door. I'm running out the door. Okay. Because I realized that that is not what I was looking for because they did not have that thing that I had, that je ne sais quoi, that thing called unconditional love. You can't get into a relationship with someone that doesn't have it because they're going to be codependent or they're going to have their issues or their abandonment issues or whatever. And so once you get that, you see it when other people don't have it and you see it when they do. And so what I'm saying is I'm not judging you for getting into the relationship in the beginning. I'm just saying that it was predicated based on the way that you were raised. And so now we just want to end that cycle of toxicity. Okay. And that's all we're doing here. And, and that's why I like, you know, being a part of this uh, community too, is that we can talk freely and I can talk with you freely without judgment. And that's what I've been trying to do on YouTube as well all this time. You can see that there's a lot of arguments that fester up because a lot of things that people haven't dealt with within their own life. Okay. So right now I'm speaking directly to you to aid and abet your life to make the changes you need to make, which is powerful. Okay. So what I want you to begin to realize is that the only reason you got in this relationship was because of the toxic cycle and the things that you were used to, right? It's not that it was healthy. It was just commonplace. And now I want you to begin to realize that we can change this and your life will change. And there's going to be a lot of things that will change as well, but we got to get a harness on this unconditional love thing. And that begins by having boundaries.
And like I've said in a lot of my YouTube videos, it's not like a boundary is not like throwing up, you know, a grenade over the fence line and saying, you will not cross this boundary. No, it's about what will you accept and what won't you accept. And when someone does something against your values or go against what you stand for, you don't accept it. You don't just agree to it. Because remember, we've agreed with it in the past so many times because of what? Because we want to be loved. Because we want to be accepted. But who cares? Because in the end, and I've talked about this before, and I'm going to do a lot of videos on this coming up, the only acceptance you've ever wanted is your own acceptance of you. And so looking to that spouse or that girlfriend or that boyfriend for acceptance, it's like, again, it's looking for the key in the wrong place, okay? It's looking for, when the key's been in your hand the whole time and you're looking over them at their hand going, give me the key, it's not, it's not for them to give you. And so that's what I want you to get. I want to get your own acceptance where you begin to accept yourself and you don't need this. You don't need it in your life. And so what I want you to do by doing this is figuring out what is it that you stand for because it's going to be hard to find if you've been trying to keep the peace the whole time because you might not even know who you are anymore. You might feel like a shell of a person because all you've done for so long is do what this person wants you to do. Okay? And so that's where I, and if you're there, that's fine. I understand that place. I get it. But I want you to begin to wrap your brain around the concept of you finding you. Okay? And I don't want you screaming at the top of your lungs to your spouse, girlfriend, or boyfriend, I'm tired of this stuff. I'm going to go find me and screw all this. No, I want you to slowly but surely begin to find it. It's almost like, a, it's almost like an underground class, right? You're, you're, you're figuring out who you are. You're going to begin to process this information. You're going to be able to figure out what you stand for, what you will deal with and what you won't deal with. And you're going to be able to also accept the fact that you're going to stop walking on eggshells. Because I think if you remember correctly, walking on eggshells is very uncomfortable. But I bet if you remember correctly, like, it's really not that bad to stand up for yourself. You've just gotten so inundated and not. And another thing that I want you to realize is that even though you might not have stood up for yourself, you still got yelled at, you still got argued with, you still got devalued, right? And so why are we allowing this to happen and still not get what we want? Okay, so that's what I want you to begin to think about right now is I want you to think about what are the changes? So I've begun to, you know, reach out to my family members. I've begun to reach out to my friends. I've actually met them during the week to see them. And then I want you to start actually implementing that and doing your own thing and accepting the argument. You don't have to stand through the argument. You don't have to sit there and listen to this being berated. You can walk out. Okay, the argument's going to be there when you come back. Okay, so I want you to realize that because what you're doing right now is you're fighting for your own identity. You're fighting to reclaim your identity. And I'm not talking about physically fighting with someone else. I'm talking about showing yourself how much you matter. Okay, because if you continue to live this life of basically hiding under a rug, dealing with them, hoping you don't get them mad, walking on eggshells, doing all this stuff, you're, you're not you. You're just a piece of property they own. That's not a person. That's not a human being. Okay? So you got to begin to stand up for yourself. And that means by deciding who and what and when you want to do something, who you want to go with, who you want to see. That begins with you spending time doing the things you want to do, not rushing home to be at their beck and call. And it's going to take a lot of practice because guess what? You have lured yourself into having a life that's not you. So I want you to catch every time when you decide... I don't want to go to the gym. I want to go to the gym, but I know if I go to the gym, he's going to call and he's going to ask me if I'm looking at somebody at the gym or what am I wearing or wants to get on FaceTime and see what I'm wearing at the gym to make sure that I'm not showing too much skin. You need to go to the gym. You need to start taking care of yourself. Okay. And why you feel like you have to answer the call every time is beyond me. You know what the call is going to be like. You've walked up and down this cycle multiple, multiple thousands of times. Okay? Remember, it takes two to tango on this. Okay, so you have the right to be powerful, and you have the right to do what you need to do. So I want you to continue to create these, uh, these relationships, recreate these relationships. I want you to start finding value in doing things outside of going home. 
I want you to create lasting relationships at work too and with friends and family and those types of things. And I want you to start experimenting with the things you want to do, whether it's writing philosophy or practicing the guitar or whatever that looks like. Maybe it's actually just working out and taking care of your body or meeting some friends up every other day to walk the neighborhood and spending time talking to your girlfriends or your guy friends or whatever. That's what I want you to begin to do because I want you to have a secure outlet Okay, and I want you to have an identity and then I want you to begin to understand what are my boundaries? What are the things that I will stand for and what will I not? And that begins with not walking on eggshells anymore. That begins with not trying to be the peacemaker anymore. That begins by not succumbing to whatever they want anymore. That is the beginning of incorporating you as a powerful person into your own life. And it begins with realizing that you have power too. And you do not have to sit through an argument. You don't have to sit through being berated. The thing is, it's not about being angry and it's not about raising your voice. It's about saying, hey, I don't have to sit through this. I'll see you later. I'm going to go. And getting in your car and doing whatever you have to do, even if it's just driving around the neighborhood. But I don't want you to get stuck and waiting for them to cool down. I want you to start living your life. Instead of worrying, should I just drive around the neighborhood for an hour for them to cool down? Or should I go into the guest room and just sit there and be quiet and hope they don't yell at me or, or try to overcome the silent treatment and getting really depressed? I want you to start living. Because eventually, when the argument's not working on you, they're going to try another tactic. Okay? And so that's fine. There'll be another tactic. Okay? And there'll be another argument. But I want you to get in such a powerful position where they begin to wonder what is going on with you. And then that's when we make incremental changes into the relationship. And we see if the person's willing to take responsibility or if they're not. And we'll find that out faster than you know. But in the meantime, we got to get you back to at least where you were before you started this relationship. Okay, so we're not, we're not running, jumping marathons right now. But there's a lot of work that has to be done. Okay, there's a lot of work that has to be done. Just creating and recreating those relationships is a lot Finding yourself and, inc and, and incorporating those things that you like to do is a lot. Not walking on eggshells anymore. Allowing the argument to happen and not need to be there. That's a big one. That's a huge one. Not picking up the phone every time, knowing what they're going to say. I mean, having the ability to say, you know what? On the 18th call right now, I'm going to turn the phone off. And I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to work out. And there might be an argument when you get home. But there's going to be an argument anyway. You know what I'm saying? And I want you to think about that. And if you do feel, though, that you are in physical danger, you cannot keep going back to that house. Because there might be some of you that are dealing with a situation where you feel physically, you feel like you can be in danger. And a lot of that is because of past situations. But a lot of that is the way that that person is presenting themselves as being bigger than life. Okay, but I also don't want you to take any risks. So if you begin to start finding yourself and, and incorporating a life and spending time outside of the household and the anger starts to get more and more um, volatile, I need you to begin to then reach out to family members, letting them know the volatility, letting them know the fear that you're dealing with. And then you would need to move out at that point to continue to create this personal growth that you are on the road to. Because I don't want you to get freaked out and get scared because of the fear of getting hurt and then walking right back into this trance. It's a trance of a life that's not yours. Remember, it's a trance of being a piece of property and forgetting that you are a soul body with a heart that has all the power in the world, right? I would rather be that than the piece of property. But if you do feel like you could be physically hurt, you need to reach out and let all your family and friends know, okay? Because remember, it doesn't help to be quiet about these types of things, okay? It's good to have people there for you and know the situation so that if shit does hit the fan, you're able to spend time at someone's house. They are going to safeguard you. And this person is not bigger than life anymore because you have a lot of other people that are supporting you, one, and know the truth, okay? Truth is knowledge and people around you is powerful. So I don't want you to feel like you have to keep this under wraps. Why do you have to keep it under wraps if somebody's being violent with you? Okay? No. That's how they win. That's how like, you know, you know, people that, you know, hurt children win because they tell the child not to say anything. 
Okay, that's not what we're doing here. Honesty is the best policy, and if necessary, public knowledge of what's happening is not a bad thing either because it keeps everybody in check, okay? Because they can only hurt you when there's nobody that knows what's going on, okay? If you're not physically feeling like you could be violated or hurt and you just know that this is just the argument and it's just the fight, keep on going through it because they're going to fight with you anyway, okay? Because when somebody becomes knowledgeable about the power they have and they're no longer being held down by someone else that other person's not liking it they're not going to like this right because they're going to see that you're recognizing your value i hope this video has helped you and i will be doing more videos on these types of concepts because i want to walk you through the stages of recognizing being stuck in a relationship right where you've lost yourself, understanding how you did, which we talked about, understanding how to regain relationships with the outside world again, understanding how to connect with the things that you love to do, right? Finding your true self, finding your calling, that kind of sort of thing, and, incre and, and incrementally integrating these into your day-to-day -day life, right? Well, then there's much more coming up after this. And so each thing takes time because it took a while to get where you are. It's gonna take a while to break back to where you were prior to the relationship. But even when we get back to you prior to that relationship, we have a lot of work to do because the only reason you got into this relationship was because you felt like you needed this person or this person gave you identity, okay? Or you do anything to be with this person because you believe that their acceptance was your value. And so we're gonna to have to overcome that as well, but we have to incrementally do these things, okay? So I hope this video has helped you and I will continue to create more of these videos. I would like to hear from you about the videos that you want me to create. Um, if it's a point by point, step by step video on how to, you know, how to walk out of a certain relationship or how to overcome a certain relationship or how to understand. That's what this whole thing is about here. That's what this whole Patreon page is all about is to really connect you and I together so that I can give you specific information, specific advice, and speak directly about subject matters that impact you. I hope this video has helped and uh, I will see you soon and don't forget to live your true life.